everyone, my name is Pleasant Moon and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 9, Episode 32. First things first to get ourselves stuck into this episode straight away is we found a wandering trader. I barely find these things around the server anymore and he's got some fun mini blocks for us to use. You all absolutely know that I've been getting into the base decoration lately and these mini blocks are absolutely fantastic for it. So we're, we're starting off strong today. We're gonna go collect all these blocks and just pick these out real quick and then we're gonna get into things properly. Enchanting table, good black. Polished basalt, purple. Amethyst black. Ancient debris, <laughs> funny that one, yeah. No, that's not happening. Prismarine bricks. Mouse black. Mm. Coal black. Horn coral. Yellow. Packed mud. Crimson planks. Stone. A little bit of tough. Packed ice. Emerald black. And let's go trade all this stuff in. I have mine, 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 mine. Boop, 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 boop. Right, mini block heads saved. And beautiful, we can use those in our collection later for decorating the base. Unfortunately, there is a couple of blocks that we couldn't get. A, well, the ancient debris block. Yeah, not gonna work. I don't have any of that. The target block, because I don't have any uh, hay bales. And, well, the mycelium one we can actually get. So let me show you guys what I've been up to in between episodes. I ended up realizing that I did not show you guys what the inside of the plant looked like. Also, is that snow? Oh, great. Why is there snow here? There is no snow over on these pieces just here. I'm presuming that must be because it is in the spruce biome. And that pains me so because that means we're gonna have to string this up later just like uh, just like last season with the lighthouse. I'll deal with that later. But yes, in, in the meantime, I came to realize I did not show you all inside of the flower in the last episode. And I've also been doing a little bit of work between episodes as well. Just some tiny detail things. Uh, first of all, starting off down here, adding some lovely little plants. I just added a few more of those little funky custom tree thingos I designed, and we just added a cute little garden. We got some amethyst crystals down here, some purple flowers. I felt like it kind of fit the theme leading up to the giant plant. But yes, uh, I did that, and I also started the path up to the inside of the giant plant. So I've gone and slabbed this all up and added an extra entryway into the plant itself. I mean, this was already here last episode, but I didn't have a full on walkway going up. But yes, anyway, I have made this lovely, very lightly sloped entryway going up into it with the spruce slabs and the coarse dirt at the moment. And we've just chucked some moss down. I had to terraform it a bit. There was kind of holes everywhere. Looking a lot better. Of course, we're gonna have to fluff this up later. But for now, that works. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this is the inside of the plant. It is just one big giant sphere. Let me quickly turn on a little bit of night vision here so you can see something. Boop, there we go. Right, now you can actually see how big this sphere is. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of texturing at the front that I had that kind of comes through to the back. We're just ignoring any inside detail for now. This is a temporary space until I can figure out what I want to do with it. Kind of thinking maybe we can put some sort of alien in here at some point. Uh, but for now, it is now home to my little mycelium farm. I buried one tiny mycelium block of Ren's area. Shh, don't tell him, it's fine, right? It's just one, just one little mycelium block. It's fine, it's, it's okay, right? I put one little mycelium block down and we have all of this slowly spreading to all of the dirt blocks around so that we can use this as a decoration piece on the base. And because we have these here, I'm just gonna nag one and give it to the villager because I need to trade that for a mini block. And um, I'm just gonna, Replace this with with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you. Yep, yep, yep. Boop. There we go. Now there's no hole in the ground. There's just one there instead. We ignore this. Okay, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so this is growing in here for now while I figure out what we're doing for the inside. And this is also kind of where I'm growing my warped wood for now before I make an official farm later down the line. I want to do some redstone stuff with this. So th this is here for now, just to kind of hide it away and not be a mess. Yes. Mr. Wandering Trader, I have the block for you. Please don't despawn. I need this blow. Gosh, I don't need it that bad. I don't need it this bad. Hello, green creeper dudes. Thank you. You die now. N you too. No, don't. Don't let me kill the llamas. I don't want to kill the llamas by accident. Okay, the llamas don't deserve this. Can you... Skeleton? Hello, you are here somewhere. I know you are. Aha, I can tell. Block, please. I will take you. You are mine. You are going to go beautifully in the decoration of our base and I'm leaving before I accidentally explode something. Right, with those mini blockheads now collected, it is time for us to get into the episode properly today. Last episode, we did a lot of base decoration things and well, hmm, base expansion things too. And this episode, I want to continue that straight away because I am way too antsy to just keep building this thing up. You know, it's been far too long of us taking a break and doing other things from it 
and I really want to improve this base tenfold. And one of the things that I touched on very briefly last time was that tunnel all the way down there. And it's still looking very, very messy at the moment, despite some minor improvements to try and kind of clean it up. And I've been toying around with some ideas and I believe I have a really nice way of finally kind of bringing this thing together and giving it a proper chance at looking nice. First things first, I actually want to remove these two pieces off to the side there, because if we look at it, oh, Impulse has got a water door going on here right now. <laughs> ah, I'm falling down. This is not going the way that I was looking. Okay, back on track. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so from Impulse's perspective, as we look at the entry to the underground right there, you can't really see a lot. It's not a very good perspective. It's not a wow factor or anything like that, which is the complete opposite that I want. The bridge is too thin, so I'm going to have to widen that later down the line. For now, I'm going to put it off because there is way too many details and I don't want to touch that right now. Instead, the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these buildings off to either side because they just crowd up the space so much. We can really open this up and simplify the area by taking those two chunks out entirely. So let's get started on that. We're not going to bother doing a time lapse transition because it's going to be really, really quick. So give me two minutes. It appears I have visitors. Looks like they're having a lovely fun time exploring all the my rocks that I have in my base. Yeah, I'll just leave them to it. They can have a party. But yes, look, here we go. They're gone. They're removed. And you can see so much more now. It feels so much cleaner. This little barrier off to the side here is almost kind of encapsulating the garden area. So it feels a little more contained and it just it's it's more open and it's more breathable. I like it. Now, of course, the bridge will need to change and we will widen that to also match with the wider entrance as well. But for now, the next step that I actually want to do is I want to dig that tunnel all the way to the other side of the landscape. Let me kind of just show you guys where it would probably come out. Ah, the other side of the land that you all don't normally see. We will eventually terraform all of this throughout the season. But anyway, for now, back to the tunnel. That tunnel is going to come out probably somewhere around here in this particular vicinity. And the idea with just dragging it all the way through the mountain is I'm hoping that tunnel will kind of inspire me to start working on, well, the proper back of the base. Of course, all our buildings have the back, but the uh, terraforming does not have the back. <laughs> so that's something I want to get going and it will help us kind of link that up and really progress it even further. And hey, it could be something interesting to walk through as well. I don't know, a little bit of fun. We try something different. So yes, like I said, it's essentially a diggy diggy time. And honestly, at the same time, I'm probably going to widen the bridge as well. We're just going to get it over and done with. Pull off the bandaid, you know, just do it. Okay, cue the really, really tiny montage because this is just digging a tunnel. It's fun. Woohoo, exciting. Woohoo. Woo -hoo. I don't even know. I'm making the sounds right now. Oh, oh, oh. oh the sounds of, of doing the time lapse. Oh, lovely because uh, the music is not going to be long enough for this or is it'll be too long for this it is going to be very short and sweet and oh look at that we're done you know what i quite like these floating trees they kind of give me a bit of that yeah you know floating candle effect as you as you walk through this lovely passed off space that we've just made i might leave these here no one's gonna mind some floating trees especially not when they give off this effect yeah yeah, we'll leave these here. These, these, these are good. These are good. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We, we are going to chop these down. I can't leave these here. <laughs> no floating trees with the cleaning lady. Thank you very much. These are all going. Thank you. Although, while we are actually chopping these down, I have been essentially thinking a little bit and I'd actually like to focus on some kind of casual building with Pearl, so to say, for today's episode. I've been really wanting to do some pranks around the server, but I'm going to admit to you all that I'm actually drawing up blanks right now, aside from my little slow burning one with green. Mm, speaking of, we do need to get to that later. But now tree chopping. So because I'm drawing up blanks, I do just need a little bit more time to come up with something fun for the other hermits to interact with. And in the meantime, feel we could have a bit of a nice relaxing build time with me today, where we can go through and decorate our brand new tunnel together. And hey, if there's any hermits you'd like to see me interact with in a future episode, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, with that said, and our trees are freshly losing their leaves and no longer floating, Let's get to the tunnel. <laughs> let's get let's get stuck into the freshly dug area here. This is a very satisfying tunnel to look at, to be able to just look straight down it and be able to see right through to the other side. It's not a tunnel that just ends in more cave or more darkness. There's just light at the end of the tunnel. This is happiness. It is bliss. And it is very fun to fly through. Like, look at all this. Ignore the absolute spam of torches on the wall because it just looked dark. We didn't have those on the wall for now. <laughs> we'll get to that when we decorate it. But it's just so much fun to go and fly through. Like, look at this. Wee -wee. 
through the tunnel. I feel like I'm doing my reptide thing, but doing a light drawy through my tunnel. I don't know what's going on today. It's fine. But it works out really well. And uh, of course, this is dug straight through to the other side and freshly ready for us to get some decoration in here and buildings. As I've said before, this is for the humanoid section of my base. And honestly, this is not going to be it. There is going to be a lot more that's going to be dug underground. I'll, I want kind of pathways stemming off from this main tunnel here, going down even further and really like hiding that human civilization underneath where they believed that they were safe. But for now, we've got to work on the story of the tunnel itself. In fact, we've even got our first uh, dead humanoid character right here. <laughs> I managed to find a zombie just wandering around. And considering I have no villagers in my mega base thus far, I think he could really help tell the story of a bit of a struggling to survive population in the middle of all this alien flora and fauna. Yes, I know that hurt. Why would you do that, sir? Thank you very much for that. I appreciate the bop. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of, before I do move on to that decoration bit, let me show you the bridge. You might have noticed it has changed a little bit. For one, the nether brick fencing and everything and like kind of the rope look feel I did end up taking out. Now, I may put it back. I'll kind of gauge everyone's opinions in the comments below here. But I did take them off because I feel like you get a really nice clear clear view through the tunnel this way and uh, I don't know it, it just feels a lot more open now if we look at it from the side too there is once again a lot less clutter going into this area and booping to the other side so yeah what do you guys think of the wider bridge and also the slightly removed little archway pieces that we had here should we put them back again should we leave them off I don't know I totally don't mind either way but it was just an idea but it definitely looks a lot better a lot wider one thing I do know that was feedback in the past as well as that some of you also were um, kind of thinking that this looked a little bit interesting like the connection was a bit shoddy between my bridge and impulses and that's where I'm going to talk to impulse a little bit later down the line and see if we can kind of come up with a really cool way to merge them a little bit better than what they are because I do agree it is a little bit of a rough merger right now it's kind of goes super thin here and then into the th thick bridge so we can definitely improve on that and so that is something we can do down the track when we feel up for it but for now let's get stuck into decorating this tunnel first things first the story that I want to convey as you might have kind of taken from my words earlier is that this human civilization has not really survived it's very much dead or at least zombified in different forms. So what I'm thinking, anything that has been exposed to the land up top is kind of going to be overtaken and maybe some vines slowly like growing through it. Just green flora, fauna, alien life everywhere climbing all throughout the structures of very you know buildings that might feel a bit more familiar to us to get things going i did grab a few resources to get us started in my ender chest here everything is color coded to kind of let me know which boxes i'm going to be using and i'm going to take these yellow shulker boxes here the red ones at least some of these anyway and i think one of these pink ones i believe and i was thinking these particular uh resources here are going to be very handy in decorating things like your moss your mossy cobblestone the crimson planks because that's the alien stuff kind of creeping back into it or at least the colors that have been harvested from the planet when the humans tried to build something here and we also have more skulk we've got mud just very dirty organic resources for the most part with a little bit of more what might we feel technological blocks mixed in? First things first, I'm actually going to remove this rock because I know we were clearing out some of the uh, space earlier and making it a little bit cleaner. I think if we take this out as well, it's going to help the area quite a little bit more here. And seeing as we have a bit of a hole, we also need to clean this up a little bit too. There we go, much cleaner and a little bit more pristine. It gives us a bit more area to work with. Now, the first big step that I want to get into here with really making it feel overrun is, you know me, we got to do the bushes. We got to do the bushes all over here, all over here. And also crawling up the side of this archway as well. I think that would look absolutely beautiful. So we need to grab out all the dirt, all the moss, all the green grass, all that kind of good stuff, and just build that up all the way around that. Hello there. I'm a transition screen for before and after of the bushes. Little bit of lighting to go with the greenery, because otherwise it's going to be too dark. Yo, 
boss. And we have the first stage of the greenery and I also tidied up a little bit with that wall too and kind of added a bit of texture into the walls that we already had. But it kind of gives you a bit of a sense of the feeling of overgrown the parts that I want to add into the build itself. Now with the idea of the greenery in, let's get stuck into this structure, shall we? One of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to build kind of a series of archways that follow the curve of the tunnel itself. So we're going to build this initial one here just as a singular kind of pillar support one, but maybe a little bit further down the tunnel, you know, kind of somewhere around here, we're going to be starting to get more of a, just a general structure going that matches the same block palette as the support beams, because those are also going to be following the curves of the cave. We're going to be using a little bit of polished deep slate as some trim to split it up and some deep slate bricks. I don't know, it keeps it kind of dark and broody, I suppose, in a way. And it gets this kind of overall feeling right here. Although at the same time, what I also want to do is add in a bit of blue trim, more specifically kind of like warped planks and a little bit of dark prismarine because that will bring in some of the plant elements from the environment around them as if they've kind of harvested some plants to use some of the dyes to add a bit of color into their own environment. So let's get stuck into that. Hello. Transition faces back. We're building buildings. Aha! It'll be done in a moment. Thank you, transition face me. Right, next step is now placed in. I have created all the archways that I was talking about with a lovely um, deep slate brick there. And I decided to use some, some kind of anvils hidden up in the rafters there. They're very hard to see right now, but we can see it from the front that they just add a little bit of extra shape and depth into the build instead of just going full flat with those uh, deep slate bricks there. And then of course the trim and the blue to the bottom adds a nice little pop of color. And I did decide to add like a little bit of uh, muddy roots just to add a little bit of texturing into the mud that we did put, in, put into the wall there. Thank you for the reminder that you exist, buddy. <laughs> and I uh, further added the greenery that we did from earlier over there into the tunnel in the new sections that we've just created and placed a couple of spore blossoms because, you know, we love the particles. They're beautiful. I love them. All floaty and green and mystical. Yes. But as you can see, I have done the baseline of what would be the entry to some structures that are kind of just built into the wall. So we're not really impeding the beautiful fly through space of the tunnel itself, but rather we're just kind of digging. I just realized I missed a block here. Uh, we're kind of just digging into the wall itself and creating the space off to the side. Something I was potentially thinking with this tunnel too is that we can maybe start moving our storage down to a section down here because my storage is getting a little bit small up in the mushroom now and I think it may or may not be time to maybe just move it somewhere else and expand it a little bit so I've got more room to put my thing. My lovely cleaning lady things. I'm placing this here before it bothers me. Boop. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so the next step that we are going to do is we're going to start digging into the wall and kind of creating what we feel to be the interior space that we want to utilize for this particular section of the tunnel. I also want to let you all know that today we are just working on a small section of the tunnel. We're not going to decorate the entire thing. We're just kind of getting things started to give you all an idea as to the direction we want to go for the overall decoration. Diggy diggy time. Ah, get plenty of cobblestone too. Yes, beautiful. Oh, hello. There is a cave behind here. Good to see you. We have to make sure to cover that up so we don't get any uh, uh, mob surprises at some point because that's kind of dark up there. A little bit spooky. Okay, I dig. Okay, we dug. And now we have a wonderful space that we can work with for some interior. Now, it is the same on both sides as you can see right here. But we can trial a little bit with one side right now. Seeing as I did mention that I wanted to move my storage down here just a little bit earlier on in the episode, we can definitely use this space that we've just dug out to stick our chests in. So what I'm partially thinking right now is we can probably just dig into this wall a little bit, make it too deep, and then we can grab our chest and then kind of stick them in a horizontal orientation like this, going vertically up the wall, and that'll keep them nice and compact. And then we can just run this all the way around and that'll be a huge storage room in itself, probably even bigger than the one that I currently have. So I'm just going to carry these all the way around the room. 
the chests are in, but some of you might kind of see a current problem with that. Uh, well, you know, we can't open the top chest because those are full blocks. And of course, we don't want to keep all of these walls stone anyway. So seeing as we have to replace those top pieces with some stairs and slabs above the chest so that we can open them, we might as well just replace the walls with the blocks that we do want to use. And I'm kind of thinking more in terms of a little bit of a black stone bricks, if I can find a chest with those in it. There's somewhere there, but I'm probably going to do some black stone bricks because that will then at least be a little bit different from the outside walls of the building, the facade. So we can get the interior having a slightly different vibe of a bit of a darker tone, something a little bit more moody, which I quite like the idea of. So we are going to go try some black stone here and see how it turns out. Oh, hi, it's Transition Pearl again. We're making some walls. It appears we have a scar in our tunnel, flying. Enjoying the scenery. <laughs> I told you it was fun to fly through. I can't help myself. I have to be adding some barrels underneath these chests as well because fun extra storage and I like the look of barrels. Okay, don't judge me. Look at them. The black stone walls are in, but I'm kind of feeling like the room is a little bit too open and empty. I mean, the size of the room isn't too bad, but I also like some kind of enclosed spaces when it comes to this particular area. So what if we also kind of added a few little archways down the middle of this room here to enclose the space a little bit and maybe add some nice shape into the area? That could be kind of interesting. You know what? I actually quite like that. I think it adds a nice little split right down the middle and you can walk in between the arches to get to all the different chests and there is still plenty of air to walk around in. I, yeah, I quite like that actually. That looks really, really nice. I'm not gonna lie, I may have forgotten to put a wall in there. Gotta fix that. Maybe we can even chuck in a little bit of skulk as if some kind of fungus is taking over the storage room. Like, you know, our meeting space back up in the mushroom. Something like that. I think just as an example, that could kind of work out and we can definitely spread it in more places. But that'll do just for this moment. We got a couple of other things I want to pick up. The next thing we want to work on is getting some proper lighting in here. I don't want to be stuck with uh, lovely torches on the ground. So I'm thinking we can put some ceiling lights in, maybe with some sea lanterns or something. That should do the trick. Interior is absolutely something that I have grown to love doing, you know, a little bit more the longer that I have been building for. And I can absolutely just potter about adding small details to this thing for quite some time. However, today with how we've got it looking at the moment I think we've made some really really nice progress but for now I'm gonna keep it basic and I think I will mess around with you know this kind of room in between episodes a little bit and see what kind of really nice details I can add just silently listening to music or something I'm going to let my mind wander either way with some chess in let's wrap up this build time today and do some final touch pieces on the outside because well yeah not looking so great out here, is it? <laughs> Although we have the base shape going on with the structures here, we are going to need that fine detail. We're going to come in with some stairs, with some slabs, a little bit of dash of extra color, maybe on the ceiling here would be really, really nice. And maybe we can even decorate it with some like dirt piles or posters on the walls, maybe slightly torn or just not readable. I don't know, just small details like that to bring it together. Cute little dirt pile here. Oops, there we go. That's a bit, 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 bit nicer. A couple of little storage barrels to go with it. Some lighting for the front entrance outside of the storage room, if I could not fail with that block placement. Boop, some doors. Get some window framing in, a couple of little curved stairs, and potentially just a couple of little walls at the top. There we go. Beautiful. A cute little window display setting with alien plants in it. And much, much more. And in one final transition, the tunnel is done. Well, the part that we were working on is kind of done, at least. Close enough. With all the new details that we've added, it has really brought this place together in here. It's really lovely to walk through. Now, I will admit there is one detail missing, and that is the small drip leaf, because apparently I've run out of those. I'm going to have to go get some of those, but I am pretty much loving how this has turned out. Now, uh, this does have to oxidize to at least one stage. I want it to get to that stage, and then I will wax it. But I think it even adds a nice pop with the current stage that it's at, with, the, with that copper right there. But I do have to say, I'm actually quite a big fan of this 
these like little banners. It makes it feel like the people who did live here were kind of celebrating something and then something happened. I don't know. You can kind of make up a story as to what has been going on in this area. I've gone and added some anvils as some like kind of partially broken railings to stop people from walking onto the road. Now we could have some cracked anvils in here and that would probably really help to communicate the broken aspect of it that we were going for. But I think for now that really, really does work. I've added the pop of color up here that I was talking about with the crimson planks and that brings more of that alien world out there into the tunnel itself. We've got some built up kind of dirty areas here as if something has crumbled or it just hasn't been maintained or taken care of. We've got some like little random posters on the walls of course you can't tell what that is so that is open to interpretation and I have expanded that black stone out into this little section here so it kind of adds a nice little contrast between the black stone and the deep slate. And yeah, if we just kind of take it all in and let the particles settle, I think it's a really lovely area to walk through. Now, I do need to get rid of that torch. There is a little bit of lighting and I kind of need to work on hiding here. But for the most part, it is mob safe. So no one's just going to get jumped on by some random creeper while just kind of walking through here. <laughs> One small detail I also did add is these little um, warped vines that kind of come up in a window display with some campfires underneath to add a bit of a moving element to the place to make it feel a bit more alive rather than static, combined of course with those lovely moving particles. And yeah, I think it's looking really, really nice. What do you guys think to the styling? Of course, it's not supposed to look pristine. This is a place that has been kind of overtaken a little bit by the environment around it. Now, the time period as to kind of when the human race had to kind of leave or died is also open to interpretation. I love building these environments and kind of letting you all make up your own stories and theories about the life in this particular environment. I need that cookie. Can I have that back? Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, make up your own story, and I'm definitely curious what you all kind of just think of the general area. However, now with this part of the tunnel kind of built up and made, that is actually going to be the end of the episode for today. I know, we just did building today. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. It feels a little bit strange, but... Let me know what you thought of this type of episode in the comments below. Maybe we do, a, you know, a little bit more sometime in the future with like a more of a relaxed building episode. I don't know, but I'm kind of just going to gauge your interest in what you feel for this style of video making. However, though, everyone, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the video, let me know down in the comments below and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. The cleaning of the day strikes again. <laughs>